I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're here with Michael Steele, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Elk Grove Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me, Tim. Looking forward to it. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us uh, where you teach and, and the subject or subjects mm -hmm. that you teach. I teach at Franklin High School in Elk Grove, California. Right now I'm teaching AP Calculus, but when I first started I taught all the different math subjects that we had. Um, I was an avid teacher for four years and followed my students from freshman year through graduation. In addition to working as an AP Calculus teacher now, I also coordinate our school's Challenge Day program, I coach our math leads team, and I used to coach baseball as well. So you said avid teacher. Mm -hmm. um, for people who don't know what avid means, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you're a very zealous teacher. <laughs> explain, explain avid. Sure. Avid um, stands for Advancement via Individual Inter Determination, and it's a program that originated out of San Diego. It's a program focused on students for us that are in the middle, that have had some obstacles maybe in their path um, that might or inhibit them from going to college and succeeding in college. And AVID is a program that helps bridge that gap and helps them find academic success, prepares them with some of the hidden curriculum out there, and prepares them to not only apply for in college, but also succeed when they get there. So you teach AP Calculus. Mm -hmm. these, are, these are obviously um, skilled kids. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you teach something that complex? How do you how do you break down something so complex? Yeah, it's an intimidating subject, even for me. I, I took the class in high school, had a great teacher, but when I finished, I still didn't feel like I fully understood it. There's just a lot to calculus. There's so many different pieces to it. So what I try to do is I always try to appeal to the fundamental skills that they have. I try to always make sure that they're comfortable with the algebraic demands, comfortable with mathematical demands, and also comfortable persevering through a difficult problem. For a lot of students, they feel like math should be something that they can compute in their head almost. They think that it should be an instant skill, but I want them to realize that these difficult problems are built up of obtainable and solvable skills that they can work their way through. So I try to really walk them through that process. I try to model a lot to really help them see what it looks like to work their way through a difficult problem, and I try to support them as they go along through, and always try to make it relevant too. It's a little easier to work through a really difficult skill or problem if you feel like it connects to something you already know. Well, I was just going to ask you that because a lot of students will say, well, how am I ever going to use this? And it may not necessarily be the math itself, but mm -hmm. some kind of a, um, a process where you're mm -hmm. thinking through a problem. Exactly. The mathematical practices really outline the sort of mathematical thinking we want from students, and calculus is a great place for them to do that. And yes, calculus may not be something that you use while you're walking your dog in the morning every single day, <laughs> but so many of the students that I run into have interest in engineering or physics or mathematics or statistics, and calculus really lays the foundation for a lot of it. We think of it as kind of the apex of mathematics in high school, but it's really the beginning of the journey of all other mathematics and all other subjects in science. So giving me an opportunity to try to connect that to things that they do, trying to make it model things like scoring in basketball games or the amount of water collected in rain, things that they might actually think about on a regular basis, really lets me connect it a little bit so that it feels a little bit more relevant to them. And does it also teach them about critical thinking without them really even knowing it? Oh, absolutely. The, and the idea of calculus and all mathematics really bases itself in using definitions and ideas and assumptions to build up some sort of structure. And calculus is its own set of tools that allow you to work your way through all sorts of different problems. So by working them through and giving them calculus as the tool set, they're able to think critically, solve problems, which may not be the same problems that they'll face in the future, but are similar to the sort of thinking processes they'll deal with when they run into a real problem in the real world. And with AP Calculus, for a lot of students, I don't want to say there's pressure, but they really want to perform well there so they can take the AP test mm -hmm. and, and, and all that. Do you find that um, you have a lot of uh, anxious students when they prepare for that? Oh, abso absolutely. Like the, the month before, even if we're done with curriculum, which we, we almost always are on our block schedule, there's a lot of nerves. There are students that are over-preparing. There are students that are worrying about preparing. Instead of preparing, the process of having this daunting exam laying in front of them, just kind of marking on the calendar, kind of buzzing at them all the time to tell them to work, is really intimidating. But in addition to trying to prepare them more and give them opportunities to prepare, I try to always remind them, too, that this isn't necessarily the ultimate goal for them either. The AP test is a great final marker, kind of a final feather in the cap but it's really not the end of the journey. Like AP Calculus's test is just a moment to kind of see where you're at and then ensure that your skills are ready to go forward in whatever else you might do mathematically. So when they're preparing for that, you know, you're not only uh, the AP teacher, but you're also kind of a, a counselor. Oh, ab absolutely. The same way during college application season when I'm revising and supporting them when they're doing personal statements during the AP test, you are absolutely a go-go motivating coach trying to get them to commit a little bit more. Like in baseball, you're doing one more rep, one more swing in the batting cage. Here it's, let's do one more problem, let's talk through this, let's find one more mistake and try to like remediate ourselves so that we're ready to go from there. So how do you apply some of the aspects of the AVID concept 
toward math? It's, it's an interesting thing. I think some of the biggest things that I took away from AVID, not just the, there's lots of critical thinking, there's lots of writing, there's lots of great things that do help out. Obviously, students in calculus have to construct arguments, they have to be able to communicate their thinking, and those are skills that come up in AVID. But for the most part, I think the environment of AVID was something I tried to transfer from my AVID classroom into my calculus classroom. I try to make sure that the students, of course, have this kind of cordial family even atmosphere within the classroom so that they feel safe and um, committed to taking risks mathematically, trying to do difficult problems, pushing themselves. For some of them, AP Calculus really is a huge stretch. So trying to push them to feel confident in that and to feel supported as they're going through is something that I've tried to do. And of course, as you said, there's so much stress when you're taking an AP test, when you're taking these massive tests that are basically final exams in college, trying to make sure that they're coached up to feel comfortable and secure in that environment and willing to talk when something's not going well or they don't feel secure and comfortable is a really important thing that I've transferred from AVID to calculus. Okay, so, so what are some of the concepts that a math teacher and a baseball, a math, math athlete's coach mm -hmm. and a baseball coach apply? Oh, just, well, for me as an athlete's coach, I, I track just as much data as I used to when I coach baseball. Like, I used to run websites for my teams with all of their stats, and here in mathletes, I run the same kinds of things. The cool thing, though, with mathletes is that we're always running into different kinds of problems, new skills that we're running into. And it's similar to coaching baseball. Like, you can be watching something on MLB Network or ESPN and hear a player mention a hitch in their swing, and suddenly, as a coach, you can start looking for that. Well, the same thing happens as a mathletes coach. As soon as we go to a competition and they talk about pentagonal numbers and suddenly this is a concept I've never even heard about before but a student mentions that they're interested we look it up and all of a sudden we have this entire new branch of mathematics opened up to us so being willing to look at new skills and listen to feedback from people and find new avenues to improve and grow is something that I've definitely translated between those two things. Yeah. How long have you been a teacher? I've been a teacher for about a decade about 10 okay. years. And always in the, always started math? You, yeah I, I have a I have a credential in math and English, but I started as a math teacher teaching pre-algebra 2 at Samuel Jackman Middle School, and since then I've taught everything up through statistics. So. so in that amount of time, what kind of changes have you seen in education? Oh, the Common Core Standards that came in really changed the way math was approached. And When I first started, everything was based on that standardized test model. We were trying to get students to be able to select an answer from a list of choices, to have enough skill to be able to look at a problem and try to work their way through it. Now there's a much bigger emphasis on being able to construct an argument and talk about mathematics, to communicate, to use the right tools all the time. And I'm finding that the students that are coming up through the program are more willing to persevere through problems. They've been supported a lot differently. And I think this year will be our first full year having students that have gone from elementary school up through calculus. So it'll be really an interesting and exciting to see what those students are like and how willing they are and interested they are in, construct in talking about math the same way that we do in calculus. So it's not only getting to the answer, but mm -hmm. you have to explain your answer and That's verbalize. And so how does it, what's the value of that? Explain the value of that. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. It's not simply going, the answer is four, and then stopping and kind of celebrating on top of the mountain. Your goal is to communicate what did that for me and what was the way that you got there. Even better, what are some different ways someone could have gotten there? The things that have made me a strong math teacher have been that comfort with doing things different ways, trying to find different ways. As, as a teacher, sometimes you're in class and you'll realize that stu half the students seem perfectly with you and half the students are questioning, scratching their head, wondering where did that come from. The beauty in being able to represent things multiple ways is you can present them multiple ways and students can talk about them in different ways. And I want them to not feel like math is just a giant array and spreadsheet of numbers. I want them to see mathematics as a way of thinking and problem solving, critical thinking, all those things together. And being able to talk about it, communicate it, and construct a really good argument is really essential to being successful in calculus and being a successful thinker in general. So what does it mean to you to be named as a teacher of the year for your district? Uh, it's, a, it's a huge honor for me. I grew up in Elk Grove Unified School District. All, every year except for fifth grade when I moved to Irvine, I was in Elk Grove Unified School District. So for me, it felt like a success for my teachers at Folks Ranch, at Harriet Eddy, and at Laguna Creek. Uh, I teach, I've taught with some of those teachers. I've taught alongside and under some of those teachers. And getting the chance to honor them and show that their influence was something that stayed with me and helped shape me and mold me into a great teacher is really special. And for me, it was a nice moment to celebrate everything that has happened as I've been a teacher. I felt like I've really transformed as a person in this role. I've been inspired by the students that have helped me see myself differently, have helped me help them, and getting the opportunity to have this honor has really helped um, embolden me to speak up and really advocate for students even more. Well, congratulations to you. We're, we're glad we could spend some time with you. We've been talking with Michael Steele, who is one of two teachers of the year from the Elk Grove Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tim.